And to formally begin tonight's program, I'd like to introduce a sister. She is a physical therapist in New Mexico, and she used to be a missionary when she was 16 years old and up until she was 20. And fun fact, actually, it's amazing to know about this. Uh, she was a sign language interpreter in the church in the Diocese of Dumaguete. And in fact, her first ministry at the feast is actually in the deaf ministry. She would actually interpret the entire feast session and mass for the deaf attendees. She moved to Cebu in 2016 and served as a music minister. She was also a servant in the singles and youth ministry. And now here in Feast North America, our dear sister is probably serving in the social uh, in the media ministry for specific to social media. So sisters, I introduce to you our worship leader for tonight, Sis Jean Cofino. Good evening, sisters. My name is Jean, and you can call me Hawana. I'm Hawana in Facebook. Today, we're going to um, talk about faithfulness. Um, God can never be unfaithful because he can never disown his own nature, right? Um, I want to share you a story. Uh, it's a story about a hound and a deer. One day, uh, a hound was roaming around in the forest and saw a deer. Of course, the hound, for the first time he saw a deer, that he saw a deer, he immediately run, ran after the deer because the hound wants to, you know, eat the deer. So the deer ran as fast as it, as it can so that the hound could not caught up to, to him. And so the, 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 the hound keep on chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing after the deer and he can't run after the deer. And so he started barking. He said, barking, barking, and barking. And the, they were not alone in the forest. So there were hounds in the forest as well. They heard the barking of the hound chasing after the deer. And so these hounds went after the hound, and they were chasing the hound that was chasing after the deer. They didn't know what the hound was running after, uh, too. And... For hours, the hounds were like frustrated and got tired and stopped running after the hound. But the hound who saw the deer kept on chasing the deer. It did not grow tired. Our faith can be likened to the hound. You need to have a personal encounter with Jesus or with God. You need to experience God's love first so that you'll be able to chase him more and more. But I think of it this way. What if it's the other way around? What if Jesus was the hound? When he saw you, he said, there she is. There's my beautiful woman. There's my beloved. And that is the kind of God that we are about to worship tonight. We are going to worship a God that is faithful. A God that never fails. A God that never gives up never fails to chase after us. A God is a promise keeper, a God that is a way maker, and a God that is a miracle worker. Let this song be an anthem to God for his faithfulness and goodness in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I've been held in your arms From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And now the smell of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made And I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Come on. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, through the darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made for. And I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Lay down and surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made of And I will sing of the goodness of God yeah. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made of. Oh, I want to sing of the goodness of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our special speaker for tonight, um, she is a singer songwriter of Feast Worship, and she is the wife of Brother Mike Venus, a builder of Feast of Bellevue. And she is a new mom to her five-month-old baby, Kyler. And she's here with us to share and talk about self-worth and how to be more confident, which is, I need some of that. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the be behind the beautiful voice, the beautiful mind, the beautiful face, and most of all, beautiful heart, sis Vea Lim Venus. Hi, Sis Bea. Hello, everybody. Hi, can you see me Hi. there? Good evening. Hi. Hello, Good I am evening. so happy to be here. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Grace. Grace, right? Hi, Gail. 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 Hi, Sorry, Gail. 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 <laughs> Hello. Yes, Gail. Thank you, Sis. We've been waiting, waiting for this. Uh, I am so happy to be here. Um, uh, side note, it feels good to put on makeup and to, you know, just dress up in these times. Because for, for the longest time, I've been in pambahay and pajamas. <laughs> yes. So thank you so yeah. much for having me. I am so thrilled to be here. Hey, let's get going. But before I actually dive into the talk proper, I just want to take this time to honor Kelly, Gail, Juana, and the whole GNI team. 
you are doing such an amazing job, especially in this time. And uh, I, I told Kelly uh, that the time when we talked, I think yesterday, I told her that it's easy to get lulled into complacency, to just, you know, hide in the four walls of your home and to just go into survival mode. But I honor you all for doing this. And now the Women's Ministry of North America is thriving. So thank you. Thank you, Sis Kelly and the whole of GNI team. Can we just give them a virtual clap? You can clap or you can put on a reaction in Zoom where you can clap. There you go. Good evening to everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon from wherever you are. So let me just, I'll be, uh, I'll be diving right into the talk and I will be uh, giving a little more background about myself. So hold on. Let me just fix this. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. There you go. There you go. So uh, as mentioned, my name is Veya. And uh, Veya, by, by, my, by, by profession, I am an event host and singer and for weddings, anniversary, birthdays, and other corporate events. By passion, I am a singer and songwriter for Feast Worship. So you can check that out on Spotify and all other music streaming platforms that you listen to. Um, uh, Feast Worship is not a band. Feast Worship is the worship movement of our community. So do check out the soundtrack of our faith at Feast Worship. You can look it up on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, Apple Music, and all the other streaming platforms. So by passion, event host, by profession, singer-songwriter, by vocation, I am the wife of Mike Vinas, and I love being his wife. And together we serve in Feast Bell UPM. And then recently also for, for five months now, I have been a mother to this cute little sweet precious boy. His name is Skylar Timothy. And I love every bit of it. Although I think this is a breather because it's only now that I get to be, you know, have some time alone to myself. So thank you again for inviting me. But the most, uh, the title that I like the most is being a child of God, being the daughter of God. And I know that all of us here are daughters and children of God. So thank you so much for being here. So let's get started. Again, my name, sorry, another thing about myself, my name is Vea, and Vea came from Vera Yahaira. Vera Yahaira, actually, um, I used to love that name. However, when I was in high school, during my graduation, the MC of the graduation called me out and said it this way. She said, let's welcome another graduate. Congratulations to Miss Vera Vajaira Lib. So after that, I stopped using Vera Yahaira altogether and I just asked my friends to just call me Vea because Vera Vajaira, come on. <laughs> Who would want to be called Vajaira, right? So I ended up using just Vea, but um, Vera in German is truth and in Slavic, it's faith. So my prayer is that I get to impart a grain of truth to you today that will hopefully make your faith grow deeper and draw you closer to Jesus. All right. And so as our theme is in full bloom, I want to use this analogy. Can we show them the picture of the sunflower? So one of my favorite flowers would be sunflower. Sunflowers are also known to be light seekers. Why light seekers? As the name suggests, um, uh, sunflowers like to seek the light. So they usually face the direction towards where the sun is. And tonight, I want to invite all of you sisters to become sunflowers, to become light seekers. For it is said in the word of God in Jeremiah 29, 13, it is said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So tonight, sisters, let us all be light seekers. Let's seek the light. Let's seek Jesus with all our hearts. Let's lean in with all our might. And let's just listen to the word of God with all that we have. For I believe that because we showed up tonight, I believe that by the end of tonight, God will show up too. Jesus will show up. Amen? Amen. I'm not so used to not seeing your faces, but let me just... All right, there you go. Okay, Jesus will show up tonight. Okay, just a quick sharing about myself. We'll be talking about self-worth tonight. That's because I grew up very insecure. And 
primarily I grew up um, comparing myself to a lot of people, comparing myself to what I see on social media, and um, you know, loathing and crying myself to sleep because I feel bad about myself, how I look like, how I am as a person, and all of that. So primarily that happened because of three things. I am insecure because of three things. The first one is because I'm a middle child. Who here are middle children? Can I see a raise of hands? Patingin nga. Can I see middle children? They call us, yeah, there. Jamie raise. Hi, Jamie. Jamie is here. Jamie is from Manila. Hello, Jamie. Um, yes, we are middle children. And you know, when you are the middle children, they call you the black sheep. They call you the, the one that has the middle child syndrome. They call you the deviant one, the different one. All the labels, they give it to the middle child. And so growing up as a middle child, I was compared constantly to my two older brothers. I had two older siblings, my older sister and my older brother. They are very smart. They, are, they were part of the top 10 students of the whole batch. While I was just an aspiring student. And so you can imagine the pressure the teachers put on me being this, the first limb that, that wasn't part of the top 10 of the batch. So I had that pressure. And because of that, just because they are smarter, I thought automatically that I was stupid. I thought that I was up to no good. And so because of that, I grew up like that. Another thing that caused my insecurity was because mahirap kami. Or in English, we were, we were living a hard up life back then. Um, as you can see in the picture, all of us would pass up as street children. And probably people would give us loose change if they see us walking along the street. If you look at my brother, that's my brother, Brother Veldin Lim. If you know him, he's the feast builder of Feast Bikutan. He's the one in green. And in Tagalog, mukha kaming mga batang hamog. <laughs> as I have said, we would pass up as street children. And because of that, because we were living a hard up life, I thought that I didn't deserve good things in life. I thought that leftovers, hand-me-downs, second-hand, and anything that is less than the best is what I deserve. And lastly, it's because we, um, I was, or I am until now, maitim. Or in English, I have dark complexion. Um, you know how it is in the Philippines when you are morena or when you have dark complexion? Um, people here would always, we all love looking up to mestizas, fair complexion ladies, and all that. And because I was maitem or I was morena, I thought automatically that I was ugly. I thought that, be, that being fair-skinned is equal to being beautiful and being, having dark complexion is equal to being ugly. And so I thought of that. I was stupid. I was up to no good. I didn't deserve good things in life. And finally, I was ugly. And because of that, that manifested in a lot of ways in my life as I was growing up. And tonight, I will be discussing in detail the five Bs. Five Bs of beauty. Five Bs that, they, that where I tied my beauty, where I tied my, my worth and my validation to. These things are not bad per se. Um, they are just neutral things. But because of uh, how we tie our identity, our worth to these bees, we, uh, that's when the problem comes. Okay, Because these things are failing. These things at some point will fade away and will not last. And so let's start. The first B is... Wait, let me hold on. Hold on. There you go. The first B is body. So I want to share with you... I think around 2018, I suffered with GERD or acid reflux. And I would have symptoms, palpitations, stomach acid coming out on my throat. Uh, what else? I would have heartburn and all that. I would, uh, my doctor gave me medicine. I would even, I underwent endoscopy, but they found nothing. And so I, keep, I kept on wondering what was happening with me. Until one time, I attended Jules' conference. And there, the speaker mentioned that um, she had tumors in her uterus that were recurring. It would come back. Uh, it, she would have the, the tumor. She would have it operated but via surgery only for the tumor to come back after a few months. And that happened three times. So she started wondering, what's wrong with me? Is there something 
psychological in me that I'm not embracing, that I'm not facing, that is causing the tumor in my uterus. And then she realized that all her life, she actually hated being a woman. Why? Because growing up, her grandmother would be so lenient to, his, to her older brother. So her older brother would get to go out, would get to um, party all night, go home at the wee hours of the morning. But her, she has to stay home. She has to be home by 6 p.m. And she would not be allowed to go out to party. And because of that, she hated being a woman. And when she realized that, that that was probably the reason why she was having recurrent tumors, she started embracing her womanhood. And after that, she never came back to the doctor. Her tumor was gone. And so when I heard that, I tried to reflect. And I thought to myself, is there something in my life that I am not embracing that is causing this acid reflux? And then I realized that my acid reflux actually started to happen after I did intermittent fasting. And I'm not saying intermittent fasting is bad. If you want to do intermittent fasting, just go ahead and do it. But I realized that behind that is because I hated my body all my life. I hated how I look like. Why? Because um, I don't know if it happened to you when you saw a picture of yourself from the past, maybe 10 years ago, and then you would look at yourself and you would say, wow, I was so thin. I was so slim back then. Yeah, it happened to you, right? But then if you really think about it, during that time when you were in that picture already, you were already probably thinking that I need to lose weight, that I am, yeah? So that was me. That was my journey. At 100 pounds, I wanted to become 90 pounds. At 110, I wanted to become 100. I constantly wanted to lose 10 pounds. And can you imagine how stress stressful that was for my body? Like it was a, I was like a hamster running in a wheel because I always had a, a what do you call this? A target that I couldn't reach because I always wanted to lose 10 pounds and I never did. And that's probably why I had my acid reflux. And during that time when I realized that I started to embrace myself and to really love my body as it is and to exercise, not because I want to lose weight, but because I love my body to eat healthy and all that. And after that, my GERD was gone. No medication needed, no, no nothing. I didn't do anything to really address the GERD, but it was gone. And so my sisters, my dear sisters, I want to ask you, how many brands are making millions out of our insecurities? Can you imagine that? Apply this and you will be whiter. Uh, put this on and you will lose a few inches from your belly. Uh, wear this and hide that mom belly pooch, whatever. How many brands are actually making millions out of our insecurities? And today I want you to reflect on this question. Do you really love your body as it is now? complete with all your stretch marks, complete with all your um, love handles, with all your hip dips, with all your wrinkles and all of that. Do you really love your body as it is now? In the word of God, in uh, Luke uh, chapter 12, verse 27 to 28, it is said, look at the lilies, favorite flower of Sister Gay. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And the next slide. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Friends, you are not just a flower to God. If you think that flowers are beautiful, if you think that lilies, sunflowers, uh, roses are beautiful, then you have to believe that you too are beautiful. For if God is good, do you, believe that, do you believe that God is good? I'm sure you believe that God is good. If God is good, then you are good. Why? Because God doesn't create junk. God doesn't create waste. God doesn't create trash. And so if God is good, then you are good. And you have to believe that. Amen? If you believe that, can you type it out in the comment? I am good because God is good. Come on, type it out. Let's have just some interaction so that I don't feel like I'm alone in here. <laughs> All right. So that's the first B. The next B is boys. And when I say boys, I mean relationships. My insecurities manifested greatly in this 
in this arena. Why? Because I entered into a series of broken relationships. In Tagalog, I would always say, never ako nabakante. I never had, there was never a time in my life when I never had a boyfriend. Not because I feel that I am beautiful, not because I am a hot shot chick who uh, have all the boys running after me, but actually it was the opposite. It's because I felt that I was ugly. And I felt that if I had a boyfriend, then someone actually saw the beauty in me. That someone actually saw the beauty that I couldn't see in myself. And so I, I entered into different kinds or different types of relationships. I dated a guy who was 10 years older than me. I was 14 then. He was 24. So imagine the shock of my parents. And later on, two years into the relationship, I found out that he was gay. And then I, I, I begged the guy to make me his number two. I was willing to enter into, relation, to a, lab, into a label-less in a relationship. I, be, I became a sugar mommy to someone. And lastly, I dated a married guy. So I entered into all sorts of relationships just because I wanted someone to see the beauty that I couldn't see in myself. And today, friends, I want to ask you the same question. Is there a relationship in your life that you are using to fill an empty void? Is there a relationship in your life that you are using to fill a gap, to fill a lack that only God can fill? Or maybe you're in the other end of the spectrum. Maybe you've been waiting for so long for a partner. And uh, because you have waited for so long, you started to think that maybe you're ugly, that maybe you're not worthy of love that maybe you're not someone that can be pursued just because no one was supporting you. Today, friends, I want to remind you that this is the truth that we have in Christ, that he said in his word, we love because he first loved us. And until God is enough, no person or relationship will ever be enough. Amen? Amen. I believe that God is love. and. God, He doesn't just have love. He doesn't just give love. He doesn't just offer us love. He is love Himself. And therefore, as long as God is there, as long as God is with us, then we, can, we don't have to worry about being loved. We don't have to worry about being accepted because we are completely, we are holy, we are totally, we are perfectly loved by love Himself. Amen? Amen. All right. So I have covered body. Uh, what else? Body, boys. And then the next one is badge. Badge would represent all our, um, all, the, all of the things that we hold on to, like power, popularity, fame, success, wealth, and all that. I want to share with you this beautiful woman. Her name is Dolores Hart. And I'm sure you've... Uh, the older generation in this chat, like Tita Lulu, hi Tita Lulu, you probably know Dolores Hart. Can you unmute yourself and tell me if you know her? Or anybody who knows Dolores Hart. She's from the older generation. She's an actress in the 60s. And she was actually um, Elvis Presley's sweetheart. The first film Elvis Presley had was with Dolores Hart. And after that, it was such success. They had another movie. And then Dolores Hart was given a Tony Award nomination. She even had also a Golden Globe, nom Golden Globe nomination. And then she was a rising star. It, she was at the peak of her career. Her career was actually about to, be, to, to, um, to have more awards and more films. But she actually shocked the whole world when she said that at the age of 24, she turned her back away from Hollywood and she decided to become a nun. And really? we sang her best. Yes. We know that? her. Who's that? Who was speaking? Me, me, Jean. Jean, oh, you know her. So, yeah, she left Hollywood. She left all the awards, all the film, all the popularity, and all that because she wanted to become a nun. Can you imagine wow. that? Even her best friend. Her best friend, who is a priest, um, when, she, when he found out about it, he said that, what? Are you crazy? He, he even thought that it was crazy for her to leave all that behind. 
And fast forward to the day, this is Dolores Hart. You can you can see her. She says she is Sister Dolores. Do we have that picture? Oh, we don't have it. It's okay, but you can you can you can try to search it. Sister Dolores is now a nun, and until now she's still alive, and it's beautiful. She never looked back since then. All of the all of the what do you call this? All of the awards, all of the acclamation, the affirmation of the world, the world could give. Sister Dolores knew that they were nothing compared to the treasure that she found in Jesus. There you go. That's Sister Dolores. Beautiful, right? Yes, like Chin Chin Gutierrez from the Philippines. Chin Chin also left the, the showbiz world to pursue Jesus because she knew that that is more important than anything else in the world. And today, I want to I want to invite you to reflect on this question. Have you been tying your worth to power, position, and position or popularity? Maybe you've been trying so hard, working so hard for that promotion, and maybe because you didn't get it, you started to think that you're stupid. Maybe you've been dying to have that title or that position in service, and it was given to someone else. And maybe you felt bad about yourself. Maybe you are as simply as, maybe you are, you've been looking at your social media, trying to see if you've had enough likes, enough hearts, enough followers. And you, you somehow catch yourself and find that you have actually been tying your purse to those things. Today, friends, I want to invite you to just know that no height of accomplishment can ever fill the depths of our hearts like only God can do. Amen? Amen. Okay, before I continue, I want to just ask anybody, can you just unmute? Let, let's talk. I, want, I, I just want to know that I'm not alone in this Zoom meeting. <laughs> Hi. Hi. We're here. Hello. You're there. Okay, Hello. so I hope that you are. Hello. Hello. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. There. I hope that you are learning so far. I still have uh, um, two more, uh, three more. And so let's get going. Thank you so much. Anytime you feel like saying amen, allow me, allow me, please, Kelly, that if they can just unmute themselves and say amen or they can type it out in the chat, whatever it is, just make me feel your presence. In Tagalog, magparamdam kayo. Like, like ghosts. <laughs> We're here. We're always okay, here. Okay, you're there. Okay, yeah. let's go. Sure, Okay, that's the next thing that I want to say that I probably have tied my worst to was baby. Or in other words, motherhood. Um, this is Brene Brown. She's a, I, I'm sure you know her. She's um, a very good motiv motivational speaker and mm -hmm. she's a social behavior expert. And she said that the top two things that trigger shame in women is number one, how we look. I'm sure you know that. And number two, coming very close a second is motherhood. You know, I've been a mother for five months now, very new to the arena, but um. I've been part of so many Facebook groups, um, sleep training, breastfeeding, uh, weaning your child from breast milk, um, introducing solid food and all that. And because of the proliferation of so many Facebook groups and experts, maybe experts and all that, I started to feel that it's easy to like question the things that I do as a mother. And many times when... I could not fulfill what the groups were suggesting to me. I would question myself, am I creating bad habits for my child? Am I destroying his future? Am I dying him for good or whatever? I, I would always uh, equate my worth to how good my son is. If my son um, slept through the night 12 hours, I felt he was good. And I am good as a mother because I was able to put him to sleep for 12 hours. But apparently, it's not. It, it's, it's just a natural phenomenon for children to wake up in the middle of the night and to ask for their mothers. And so easily, I would feel the guilt of being a bad mother just because I could not 
um, meet the standards of the baby experts I see online. I would even compare my child to the growth of other babies. And maybe you have felt the same way too. I don't know about you. May I, I'm sure a lot more pressure, a lot more questions in my head would come as my child grows older. Have you? And I want to ask you this question. Have you been defining your worth by how good or bad you parent your children? Maybe at some point they created a mistake and you ask yourself, am I to blame? Was there something that I did that made him or her act that way? Am I, maybe they, they created, a, they, they failed big time. And then you started to point the gun to yourself, blaming yourself that it's your fault. Today, friends, I want to I wanna encourage you with this truth that before you are a mother, you have to understand that you are first a daughter of the father. And this, the second one is more important, that before your children are your children, they are first children of God. And so, yes, give them all the love that they need. But at the end of the day, if they fail, then let's allow God to parent them. If they commit a mistake, then let's allow God to, to parent them because they are not just our children. They are first children of God. Amen? Amen. And so last but not the least, but not the least is bad stuff. Bad stuff. So bad stuff. I want to um, introduce to you this lady. Her name is Terry Gobanga. Terry Gobanga is an African woman. And on the night before she got married, she realized that the tie, the necktie of her groom is with her. And so she asked her brother to wake up early in the morning to bring the necktie to her groom. So Come the wedding day, they both wake up, woke up very early in the morning. Terry um, brought her brother to the bus station so that the brother can give the tie, and Terry went home. But on the way, way home, Terry was abducted by a group of men. She was brought inside the car, and inside the car, she was beaten, she was stabbed, and lastly, imagine that she was raped on the day of her wedding. And she was left for dead. She was thrown at the side of the, the road. Think, the, the men were thinking that she was dead. And even the police, when, when they saw her, they actually thought that she was dead. They were about to bring her to the morgue. But she coughed out, and then she woke up, and then she was brought to the hospital. Long story short, she went through depression. She felt really sad. She wallowed into her shame, into her guilt. She felt that it was her fault for being raped. She thought that she deserved it. And finally, she, she thought that she was damaged goods. She thought that she couldn't marry her husband anymore, her groom anymore, because she was unworthy of love. And I don't know about you. I don't know. Maybe some of you here are going through the same thing. Maybe the world something did to you. The world did something to you. And... Uh, it was unimaginable pain. They caused you unimaginable pain. Maybe you feel that you are beyond repair, that you are also a damaged good, that you are hopeless, that you are tied to that chain. But today, friends, I want to remind you that our God refuses to waste anything. Just like what, she, what he did to the life of Terry, what was intended for evil, God turned around into something for Terry's good and for his glory. Fast forward to today, Terry is now a preacher. She's a, she has a foundation that helps rape survivors, and she is happily married with two children. And I want to ask you this question to reflect on, have you been bound by chains because of what the world did to you? Maybe someone broke your heart. Maybe someone broke you. Maybe... I don't know, maybe like Terry, maybe you had a same, similar experience with Terry. Maybe the world did something that's terribly wrong. But today, friends, I want to remind you that our God uses, our God refuses to waste nothing. That just, was, just as what he did with Terry's life, I believe that God can free you. It is said in his word that if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. And I want to make you believe that, that you are free, that those chains don't have 
power on you anymore, that the past doesn't have power you all over you anymore. And it's true. We cannot cancel what the world did to you. We cannot undo that. But the reality is we, no one and nothing can also cancel what Jesus did for you on the cross. No one can cancel the victory Jesus won for you on the cross. And so I want to encourage you with what another preacher said. Stop making what the world did to you bigger than what Jesus did for you on the cross. Amen? So my prayer is that to anybody here who underwent bad stuff in life, I pray that you realize that you are free. Because Jesus has won it over the cross. And the past is behind you now. And you are free. And I hope that you stop tying your worth to that. If ever you come to those nights when you question yourself and you ask, am I worthy of love? I invite you to look at the cross and remind yourself that that is your worth. The life of Jesus on the cross. All right. And so... We are down to our last story. I'm about to close. I'm about to end. And I want to share to you this story. This is Erica. Let's show her her picture. So Erica, she's a, she's a, a feaster here in the Philippines. And Erica, she was a law student. She was happily married. And she has a beautiful family. She has two children. But one morning, to the shock of her life, when she woke up, she faced the mirror and she saw that half of her face was paralyzed. That she couldn't move half of her face. Tabingi yung mukha niya. And when she went to the doctor, she found out that she is suffering from Bell's palsy. Can you show, her, show them the picture? So Erica was suffering from Bell's palsy. As you can see in the picture, half of her face is paralyzed. And because of that, she just completely lost confidence. She lost her confidence. She locked up herself in the room, didn't want to show up to her law school, didn't want to show herself to her kids, and she didn't even want to sh- look at herself in the mirror. But one fine morning when she was having her therapy, uh, she heard the song that I have written, and it blessed her immensely. And this is what the song told her. She felt that the Lord was telling her, you are my first love, not a hair out of place, not a flaw can erase the beauty of your face. And right at that moment, she knew that even if her face was like that, she knew that God loves her. She knew that God saw the beauty in her. This is what she said. Can we go to the next slide? No matter how I look, in God's eyes, I am beautiful. God is looking at me with so much love and nothing can separate me from his love. Today, friends, I don't know where you tied your worth. Maybe it's baby, it's body, it's badge, it's whatever. But today, I want to invite you to reflect in this song. And I want you to uh, listen to it. It's a song that I have written. And it's a conversation between the daughter of, a daughter of God and God himself. And so with that, um, let's all come in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make this song your prayer. God, speak to us tonight as we lean in before love.
are my first love Not a hair out of place Not a flaw can erase The beauty of your face My true love, there is wonder in your gaze. You are matchless every way. You never cease to miss. I know you so much more. I am yours. You are. God, we continue to surrender to you our hearts. We believe that we are yours and remind us always, give us the grace to remember that we are, you are mine and we are yours, God. Forever we will be your daughter, forever we will be your child. May we always remember our worth by looking at your cross, remembering what you have done for us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We call on Sis Leia. All right, let's close this session into prayer. Is that right? Yes. Thank Once again, you. thank you everybody for having me. I hope that you were blessed as much as I was blessed. So let's all come. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, we thank you for being, being with us tonight. You have stayed true to your promise that we believe, Lord, that you have showed up tonight and we pray for the grace that we may uh, keep in our hearts whatever it is that we have learned. May the truth that we are your child be ingrained in our hearts now and forever. We continue to pray for the GNI team, Lord. Continue to bless them, grant them the people, grant them um, the opportunity to serve more and to bless more women. May you continue to use them to shine your light in North America. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.